Aloha, my friends, or should I say, hola, because today's episode is all about carnitas. This is Maui Craft Kitchen, and I'm Don, but what are carnitas? Who are carnitas? Where are carnitas? Most importantly, when are carnitas? Huh? Huh? Carnitas, literally translated, means little meats. But just because little is in the title, doesn't mean it has to be in the flavor. So we're gonna kick this recipe up a little bit by cold smoking it. What is cold smoking? I'm gonna answer all of your questions in this episode, don't you worry. Right now, be sure to take a second and hit that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on all of my latest content as soon as it hits the shelves. Now let's work some of that Maui magic and get right down to it. Give it up for my main man, Rod the Camera Guy. Woo, 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 woo. We love you, Rod, we love you. And now back to carnitas. Today's recipe doesn't really have any exact measurements, just more or less some processes and techniques for you to follow along at home that are going to give you the same result that I have here today. First thing, pork shoulder. Why are we using pork shoulder? Because pork shoulder has a higher amount of fat by nature, roughly 30%, and that's going to lend itself very well to today's dish. The first thing you're going to want to do to this pork shoulder is take off any of the undesirables. These are simply things like glands or bone, anything you don't desire in your carnitas. Once you've taken off all the undesirables, you're going to slice this at an extreme angle. The reason that we do this is to get more surface area. The more surface area we have, the more surface area we can smoke, which equals more flavor. Go ahead and cut your pork up now. Now that everything's a bit more manageable, we're going to season this with salt, cumin, garlic, and black pepper. Be sure to get any of the bits off the cutting board with the meat. Don't want to waste any of those bits. All of that is nice, good money. Now that we're all seasoned up, we're going to head outside to the cold smoker. Welcome to the cold smoker, which is also the same as the hot smoker. Yeah, you caught me, you caught me. So how do we cold smoke? Cold smoking simply means that we're going to keep the heat source as far away from the product as possible, making sure that the temperature inside of our chamber doesn't reach over roughly 180 degrees Fahrenheit. To do this today, I'm going to be using my cast iron smoking box. These things are great and I highly recommend them. Super easy to use, simply lift the lid, fill it with dry wood chips, make sure the lid is nice and secure again, and set this directly on top of your coals. As it heats, the wood chips will start to smolder and smoke, and the smoke will come through the grates, perfuming your product. If you don't have one of these, that's fine. There are other options. Something like this aluminum pie tin will do just fine. To use this, all you have to do is fill it with wood chips again, fold it taco style, making sure that all of the sides are securely latched down, and then you will set this directly on top of your coals in the same manner. Either one of these options will work just fine and give you a great result in the end. But today, seeing as how I have this cast iron smoking box, I'll be using this. Now that your coals are hot, simply dump them out and arrange them in a nice, neat, even layer. Grab your smoker box full of dry wood chips and set it directly on top of the hot coals. If you're using the aluminum pie pan, you would do the exact same thing. Now reassemble your smoker and set the meat as far away from the heat source as humanly possible, keeping even spacing in between to make sure that the smoke can get all the way around. We're going to smoke these for roughly an hour to an hour and a half or until the wood chips stop smoking. We're 
Welcome back from our outside field trip. See, I told you cold smoking was easy. You guys are doing a great job. Keep it up, we're almost done. Next, we're going to make the pork pull apart tender. I'm going to be doing this using my trusty old pressure cooker. Again, if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend buying one. It'll save you a ton of time in the kitchen. You could also use your slow cooker, that's fine. Just put everything in the pot, bring it up to temperature on high, kick it down to low, and cook until tender. If you don't have a slow cooker, you could even do this in an oven. Just get a high-sided roasting pan, put everything in there, cover it with aluminum foil, and cook it at 300 degrees until fork tender. But because I have a pressure cooker, I'm going to be using the pressure cooker. To the pork in the pressure cooker, I'm going to be adding one large onion, not Chernobyl large, just large, two bulbs of garlic, and one jalapeno. If you don't like spice, simply omit the jalapeno. But who doesn't like a little spice in their life? Now let's get all this cut up and put in the pot with the pork. Now that everything's in the pot, we're going to add the final two ingredients. Roughly three quarters of a cup of water. And maybe 25 grams of lard. Yeah, I know, lard. I know what you're thinking. Ooh, gross, lard. I'm not putting that in mine. Why? It's already in here. All this is, is rendered down pork fat that's been re-solidified. So we're just adding more pork fat into the pork fat. So in it goes. Now I'm going to pressure cook this on high for one hour. Holy cow, or should I say, pig, you just made your very own smoked carnitas. Whoop, whoop. Now call up your friends, pull out your favorite tortillas, which I'll be giving you my recipe for soon, and let the fiesta begin. Keep cooking and keep having fun, my friends. Many mahalos and much aloha.